Welcome to the Chemistry, Biology and Math Revision Hub. Today we are doing the Pearson Ed Excel International GCSE for the Pure Mathematics Paper 1 for January 2022. And this is the Part 1 video. I'll put the link to the Part 2 video below in the description box. Let us begin with the first question. Question 1 says, using calculus, find the exact value of this, this integral from pi over 4 to pi over 3 of cos 4 theta with respect to theta. And they say give your answer in the form of negative root a over b, where a is a prime number and b is an integer. So I began by writing it like that. We know that when we integrate cos 4 theta, we will get sine 4 theta divided by 4. After integrating, you put square brackets and then you put the limits of integration around the square brackets. So I began by substituting the higher power. So 1 over 4, which is taking out the 4, so 1 over 4 into the sine of 4 times that, minus 1 over 4 into the sine of 4 times that. So simplifying, of course, this gives me sine of pi, and sine of pi is 0. So this whole thing dies out to become 0. Also, this one here gave me sine of 4 over 3 pi, and to simplify, that gave me 1 over 4 times the answer from here, which is negative, root 3 over 2, and the answer came out to be negative root 3 over 8. So when we go back here, a is going to be root 3 and b is going to be 8. So that's the end to question 1. Let's continue to question 2. Question 2 says, f of x is equal to 2x squared minus 12x plus 5. They say given that f of x can be written in the form of f of x is equal to a into x plus b bracket squared plus c, where a, b, and c are integers, Find the value of a and the value of b and the value of c. This is our function. To rewrite that function in this manner, we have to complete the square. So I began by completing the square. And to do that, I had to take out the 2 first to create a coefficient of 1 to the x squared. So x squared should have a coefficient 1. Taking out the 2 creates a 6 here and a 5 over 2 here if I put the 2 on everything. Then by completing the square, this becomes... 2 into x minus 3 bracket squared minus that squared and then plus that. So to simplify that, I brought the 2 in. So 2 into x minus 3 squared minus 2 times that, which is 2 times 9, plus 5 over 2 times 2, which gave me 5. And then to further simplify, that remained as it is up there, but this became negative 18 and that is plus 5. To combine this, I got negative 13. So my answer was 2 into x minus 3 squared minus 13. And then we go back here, they say write it in this form. So comparing that to that here, my a is 2, my b is negative 3, and my c is negative 13. And then in part b they said, hence find the set of values of x for which f of x minus 37 is greater than 0. If f of x minus 37 is greater than 0, it means my f of x, which is that, minus 37 should be greater than 0, so I get that. And then... Combining these two, I have 2 into x minus 3 squared minus 50 is going to be greater than 0. And then I took the 50 the other side. So 2 into x minus 3 squared should be greater than 50. And then that should be greater than 25 if I divide by 2. Finally, I got x minus 3 should be greater than positive or minus 5 because I took out the square root. So I have two possible answers. If x minus 3 is equal to 5, I got x is equal to 8, and then if x minus 3 is equal to negative 5, I get x is equal to negative 2. So these are the regions we have to consider when sketching something like that. So it means if a sketch looks like that, it means the ranges are negative 2 and 8. The regions where f of x is greater than 0 are that and that. So my solution should be x is going to be less than negative 2 and x is greater than 8. These were the regions, or you would say, these were the set of values for which f of x minus 37 is going to be greater than 0. Question 3. A geometric series G has the first term A and the common ratio R. The second term of G is 5 over 16. And the fifth term of G is 135 over 1024. They want us to find the value of R and the value of A. So remember this is a geometric series whereby a term is AR power N minus 1. So the second term is going to be AR power 2 minus 1, which is AR power 1. Or you could just say AR. 
So it means the second term AR is 5 over 16. And the fifth term should be AR power 5 minus 1, which is the same as AR power 4. And that is equal to that. So if I have these two sets here, I can rewrite this as AR times R power 3. This is the same as that. And since I already have the value of the second term, which is AR, I can substitute that here. And when I do, I get 5 over 16 times R3, which is equal to that, which is still the fourth term. To further simplify and find the value of r, r is equal to that times that divided by that times that, which we have here. And then r cubed is this as simplified. So my r comes out to be the cube root of 27 is 3 and the cube root of 64 is going to be 4. So my r is 3 over 4. So then the next part is to find the a value of a. Since I know this, I can substitute the r here to make a the subject. And that's what I did here. So to find a, we know a r is 5 over 16 from the value from the second term. So a times r, which is 3 over 4, is equal to 5 over 16. And therefore, a should equal to that times that divided by that times that. a is equal to 5 over 16 times 4 over 3, which gives us a is equal to 5 over 12. To go back here, for part b, they say, given that g is convergent with sum to infinity s, find the exact value of s. Remember, s is the sum to infinity. The formula for the sum to infinity is equal to a over 1 minus r. We know our r is 4 over 3, and we know our a is 5 over 12. So substitute everything here. I got 5 over 12 divided by 1 minus 4 over 3. And to simplify this, it gave me 5 over 3. And that was my answer to part b. So this brings us to the end of question 3. Let's continue to question 4. Question 4a. On the grid opposite, draw the line with the equation y is equal to 2x minus 4, 2x plus 3y is equal to 12, and y plus 2x plus 2 is equal to 0. So I drew the lines. Of course, you can see here, I believe everybody knows how to draw the line. If you do not know, just find two values of x and substitute and find the corresponding two values of y. For example, here when x is equal to 0, I can see my y will be negative 4. So you can see that point here is going to be 0, negative 4. And when my x is equal to 1, my y will equal to negative 2. And we can see at 1, we have a negative 2 here. So all you need to do is draw a straight line through those points, and then that will be your line. Now, because I used an iPad, I had to draw multiple points in order to make a straight line that corresponds through that. So this was the line y is equal to 2x minus 4. So you'll do the same thing for the other lines and draw them appropriately as I did. The required lines were that, that, and that. So to go back here, they said, show by shading on a grid the region R defined by these inequalities. So y is greater or equal to 2x minus 4, and then 2x plus 3y is less or equal to 12, and y plus 2x plus 2 is greater or equal to 0. The region I shaded was here, which is region R. And again, you have to find the corresponding regions, whether it's greater or less, and then label that region R like I did here. Continuing on to the next part, they say for all points of R with coordinates x, y, where p is equal to x minus 2y, find the least value of p. To find the least value of p, we have to find the coordinates of this point, that, that, and that. So for this point here, my coordinate is negative 4.57. Here I have 0 0.5, negative 3. And here I have 3, 2. So I use these values down here. At 0 0.5, negative 3, p is equal to, substitute here 0 0.5, and then negative 3, I get 6.5. At the point 3, 2, my p is equal to 3 minus 2 times 2, which gives me negative 1. And at this point here, my answer was negative 18.5. Since they wanted us to find the least value of p, of course, we can see this is the lowest value. So I say the least value of p is negative 18.5, and that is going to be your answer. So this brings us to the end of question 4. Let's continue to question 5. Question 5. f of x is equal to ax cubed plus 5bx squared plus 8ax minus 4b, where a and b are integers. Given that x plus 2 is a factor of f of x, if x plus 2 is a factor, it means when you substitute x is equal to negative 2 in here, you will get f of x is equal to 0. They also said, and that, 
when f of x is divided by x plus 3, that remainder is 21. Show that a is equal to 2 and find the value of b. They said f of x plus 2 is a factor. If I substitute negative 2 into f of x, I get f of negative 2 equal to 0. So f of negative 2, which is equal to 0, should equal to a into negative 2 cubed plus 5b into negative 2 squared plus 8a into negative 2 minus 4b, which gave me 0. And I simplified this. In the end, I got 2b is equal to 3a, and that is my equation 1. Remember, they also told us when they divide by x plus 3, it leaves a remainder 21, meaning substituting negative 3 in plus of x, I get 21. So a into negative 3 cubed plus 5b into negative 3 squared plus 8a into negative 3 minus 4b gives us 21. And to simplify, this becomes negative 27a plus 45b minus 24a minus 4b equals 21. And collecting like terms, I got negative 51a plus 41b is equal to 21. This is my equation too. So I know from here, b should equal to 3 over 2a, as I did here. Then I substituted this b in here in the next step in order to find the value of a. So when I substitute this b into this equation here, I get negative 51a plus 41 into 3 over 2a is equal to 21. And then I simplified, continuing on to this page, to make a the subject, and I got a is equal to 2. Then, since from the equation star here, I already said b is equal to 3 over 2a, just substitute the a you got here. So 3 over 2 times 2 gives us b is equal to 3. That was my answer. So a is 2 and b is equal to 3. When we go back here, they say for part b, use algebra to solve the equation f of x is equal to 0. Now, all I need to do is, since I have a and I have b, I will substitute them here and find my equation for f of x only in terms of x. So that is what I did here. I substituted my a and my b, and I got 2x cubed plus 15x squared plus 16x minus 12. This is my f of x. But remember, they told us x plus 2 is a factor, so I divided this with x plus 2 using long division, as you can see here. And to do that, I wanted to find a corresponding quadratic function that I could later simplify. So to divide this, that divide by x, you get 2x squared. That times that gives us 2x cubed. That times that gives us 4x squared. Subtracting this gives me, this is going to be that 11x squared. Then I brought this down and that down here. Then that divide by that, I get 11x. And that times that, I get 11x squared that times that I got 22x. And then when I subtracted, I got negative 6x and brought this here. So that divide by that, you get negative 6, that times that, negative 6x, and that times that is negative 12. In the end, my remainder was 0, because when you subtract here, you get 0. So since the remainder was 0, it means this is the same as that times that. So I wrote it here. Now, since I have a linear function as well as a quadratic function, I can simplify the quadratic function, and that became these two. So f of x, which is that, is also this. And when f of x is equal to 0, it means that is equal to 0, like you see here. And when that is equal to 0, my x can be negative 2, my x can be 1 over 2, or my x can equal to negative 6. So this is the answer to part b of question 5. So this brings us to the end of question 5. Let's continue to question 6. Question 6. In triangle ABC, SC is equal to x centimeters, AB is equal to x plus 3 centimeters, and angle ABC is 30. They say given that angle ACB is equal to theta degrees, where 0 is less than theta, less than 90, they want you to show that the sine of theta is equal to x plus 3 over 2x, and number 2, they want you to show that the cos of theta is equal to that. So I tried to sketch, although it's not necessary, but I already sketch to visualize what's happening. And using the sine rule, I can see that x over sine 30 is equal to x plus 3 over sine theta. Sine theta will equal to x plus 3 times sine 30 divided by x. And we know sine 30 is going to be 1 over 2. So this is the same as x plus 3 divided by 2x. And that is my answer from the first part. So I use the sine rule to find that. Remind 2, they say cos theta is equal to the root of this. So to show that, 
I came here and I said, we remember that cos square theta plus sine square theta is equal to 1. Therefore, cos square theta should be 1 minus sine square theta. We know from A, sine theta was x plus 3 over 2x. So sine square theta is going to be that squared, meaning cos square theta is equal to 1 minus the sine square theta, which is that. And again, to remind you, I got this from part A, where sine theta was x plus 3 over 2x. So going down here, since cos square theta is equal to that, cos theta should equal to the square root of everything in here, which became 1 minus into x plus 3 over 2x squared. And then to square that, I get x squared plus 6x plus 9 over 4x squared. So that comes here. You multiply to put everything on the same denominator. This is going to be 4x squared minus x squared minus 6x minus 9 divided by 4x squared. And it becomes 3x squared minus 6x minus 9 divided by 2x. And that was my required answer from the expression here. So in part B, they say... Given that the size of angle BAC to the size of angle ABC is 72, this is a ratio, find the exact value of x, give your answer in the form of A plus A, root B, where A and B are prime numbers. So we know that ratio there. So I began by writing the ratio here. If the angle BAC over angle ABC is 7 over 2, we can see that angle BSC should equal to 7 over 2 times the angle ABC. But we know angle ABC is 30, so this is going to be BSC is 7 over 2 times 30, which is 105, so BSC is 105. And then here I also said from above, angle ABC is 30, angle BSC is 105. If we know that and we know that, this angle here is going to be 180 minus the sum of the two angles, which is that. Therefore, angle theta is going to be 45. So I also told you, remember, from the previous part, which is 1a, the sine of theta was equal to this. So it means when I substitute 45, sine 45 is equal to that. And therefore, we know sine 45 is going to be root 2 over 2. And then cross multiplying, this is going to be root 2 into 2x is equal to 2 into x plus 3. And then this is going to be 2x root 2 is equal to 2x plus 6. Then collect like terms, the x is this way, and leave that 6 the other side. It becomes x into 2 root 2 minus 2 is equal to 6. x is equal to 6 over 2 root 2 minus 2, which is equal to this. To rationalize the denominator, I have to multiply the denominator and the numerator by root 2 plus 1. So that times root 2 plus 1 and that, that times root 2 plus 1. I get 3 root 2 plus 3 divided by root 2 squared minus 1 squared. Because this is the same as a squared minus b squared, which is that squared minus that squared since it's a minus b and a plus b. I showed you something here. In the end, this is going to be 2 minus 1, which is 1. So I only have 3 root 2 plus 3 divided by 1, which is that. And then my final answer to write as required is 3 plus 3 root 2, which was they told you to rewrite it as a plus a root b. So this is 3, that is 3, and b is going to be equal to 2, as we can see down here. So this brings us to the end of question six, as well as to the end of this first part of this paper. Thank you for being with us. Do not forget to subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.